Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 29th, 2017 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Baltimore, Maryland. Well, I'm here in Baltimore teaching intrusion detection, so really fitting that Xavier today posted about how to analyze huge amounts of PCAP data. One really interesting tool here is Moloch. Moloch is a database that collects essentially PCAP data and then makes it available via an elastic search database. It also implements a real neat and slick web front end. Xavier shows how to install these components really quickly using a Docker container and then goes over some of the features of Moloch. So, will create weekend project and of course a hat tip to William Salusky, the person behind Moloch. And CyberArk found an interesting vulnerability that can be used to bypass Windows Defender and possibly other anti-malware systems as well. They call it Illusion Gap and it relies on the victim downloading the malicious file from an SMB file share. The problem here is that initially the victim will download the file using a process on the system. Creating that process does trigger antivirus to then check on the file, which triggers an additional request from the antivirus software to the file share in order to download and inspect the file. Illusion Gap relies on identifying whether or not a request was initiated by a process the user started or by anti-malware. Whenever the user downloads the file, the malicious file is served. If anti-malware downloads the file, then a benign file is served, essentially confusing anti-malware and allowing the particular file to run. Now, CyberArk did notify Microsoft about this issue. The problem here is that Microsoft doesn't really see it as a big problem because in order to download the file from this particular SMB server, the user first has to trust and connect to that SMB share, which triggers a number of pop-ups. This could not be exploited by uploading this file on a share the user already trusts because in order to switch the file, the attacker actually has to swap out the SMB server used to serve the files. So while this is an interesting bug, possibly a vulnerability, it isn't easily exploitable and probably it's easier to just find some malware that is not recognized by the anti-malware solution running on the particular host. And on October 11th, ICANN was supposed to roll out the new root key signing key for the root DNSSEC zone. This is an important update because the new key will be longer. However, well, uh, the update has been delayed. Some metrics had shown that many large DNS servers have not downloaded the most recent 2017 key, still are working with the 2010 key. So a large percentage of the internet's population may not be able to resolve host names if this new key is made live. Now we're talking here about eight to 10% from some of the numbers that I've seen as part of press release. I can also state that about a quarter of the internet users are affected by the rollover. So to avoid any disruptions, I can decided to hold back the key update and wait a while for more ISPs to update their keys and also to make sure that everybody is able to receive and use these new longer keys. With DNSSEC, of course, all DNS data is signed and essentially this root key signing key acts somewhat like a certificate authority for all of these DNSSEC keys. So if this update fails, then all zones that are signed using DNSSEC may have been issues resolving. 
And Qualys found an interesting approach escalation vulnerability in most recent versions of Linux. The problem here are positioned independent executables. When they're mapped into memory, it's possible for some of the executable to overwrite its own stack. Now, usually this would just cause the problem to crash and wouldn't really be a big security issue. But under the right circumstances and with an SUID root binary, it may be possible for an attacker that's able to execute such a binary to actually then gain root privileges. A patch has been released to fix this issue. So if you see a kernel patch pop up in your Linux distribution, this is probably what this is about. I wouldn't rush it out, but uh, pretty much apply it as soon as your patch procedure allows. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.